This Health Ranger Report pandemic podcast is brought to you by naturalnews.com for uncensored reporting and healthrangerstore.com for lab tested preparedness supplies such as storable food, full face medical masks, biostructured silver first aid gel, and iodine only while supplies last. It is astonishing, really, that there are people out there who still say this coronavirus pandemic is just, it's just another flu. Don't worry, it's just like the flu. The seasonal flu that kills reportedly 35,000 people a year in the United States, according to the CDC, roughly 30, maybe some years it might be 45,000, you know, it varies. But it's, it's just like the flu. So here in this pandemic.news update, for February 25th, I'm going to share some reasons why this is not the flu. And I guess we could start with number one, that the flu is not a genetically engineered biological weapon system, but this coronavirus is. <laughs> this coronavirus was created to destroy human life, whereas the seasonal flu is an accidental uh, mutation of influenza that's very mild actually. It infects huge numbers of people, but it has such a small mortality rate that the total number of deaths is relatively small compared to the number of people it infects. I've seen, I think I've seen estimates of the mortality rate of 0.07% or something like that. I mean, it's a fraction of the mortality of this coronavirus. And depending on who you believe, this coronavirus kills anywhere from what, 2% on the low side, if you believe the WHO, which is covering for communist China, or 17% on the high side, also depending on your circumstances, depending on how good of medical care you get, depending on your age, your immune system function, your nutritional profile, all these things. For some people, it's a very high death rate for many people. In fact, I remember seeing one study where anyone who went into serious status with this, like a serious clinical designation, had a 94% chance of dying. And then we saw a Lancet study recently that said that's actually 61.5%. Well, both of those are big numbers. If you go into serious condition, you have a 61% chance of dying. That's a big chance. That's huge. So this is not the flu, not even close. Now, also, the flu doesn't cause permanent organ damage when you overcome it. Well, this coronavirus, even if you survive it, you end up with permanently scarred lungs and then destroyed respiratory function. You come out of it basically with half your lung function, even if you live in, in many cases. I mean, the lungs just get destroyed. All the lung tissue gets turned into scar tissue. It's so bad it shows up on CT scans. I mean, it's just shredding lung tissue from the inside. It's unreal. The regular flu doesn't do that. Also, of course, the regular flu doesn't combine elements from SARS and MERS and maybe even HIV components, but, but this coronavirus does. It's got all that in there because it was engineered. The regular flu doesn't cause people to drop dead while they're walking on the street or sitting at a desk or standing on a street corner. I mean, literally drop dead like in 30 seconds, almost a seizure, and then they're dead. But the coronavirus does, and there are numerous videos showing that. And by the way, China would not shut down its entire manufacturing base over the seasonal flu. And the way we know that is, of course, there have been flus every year in China. They never shut everything down. They didn't weld the doors shut on apartment complexes. They didn't risk their entire national GDP and even the viability of the communist regime. They wouldn't risk all that over a seasonal flu that kills almost no one. Not a chance. And plus, the, the regular flu, by the way, doesn't have an r naught value of 6.6, .6, and it doesn't spread during the asymptomatic period, and it doesn't have an asymptomatic period up to 27 days like this coronavirus does. All these things allow the coronavirus to evade detection. It, it can evade airport screening. That's why this is spreading so quickly from nation to nation, city to city, because it's hard to detect. And by the way, the regular flu doesn't cause you to start vomiting blood, as some people are doing with this coronavirus, people bleeding out on the street, collapsing, blood spilling. I mean, I, I don't want to get too graphic here, but 
we've seen these images out of China. And China, for their part, they didn't bring in 40 mobile cremation ovens for the seasonal flu, but they did that for the coronavirus. Oh, but right. Those are labeled for animal corpses. Okay. All right. So if you believe China, then there's an animal epidemic, uh, like an animal flu problem in China that no one believes. (laughs) No, no. There's a coronavirus biological weapon system that got loose. Remember, it's engineered to kill people, and it's engineered to operate in stealth mode. That's why this is more dangerous than even Ebola, because Ebola, you see, when you have Ebola, it's pretty obvious, because you're bleeding out of your eyes, and you're bleeding internally, you're hemorrhaging to death everywhere, there's blood coming out of every orifice in your body. That's not a stealth mode virus. Ebola is easy to control because it doesn't spread in stealth mode. And when people have it, you know they have it because it's pretty darn obvious. Coronavirus is difficult to control because people have it and they don't even know they have it. They have no symptoms, but they're spreading it. And so a death rate of about 15% actually is optimized for spreading this, causing chaos. It's just enough deaths to make cities shut down their operations and send people home like Wuhan, China but it's not high enough of a death rate to kill all the carriers. It's actually, it's almost perfectly optimized to spread in most people and have mild symptoms in about 80% of those who are infected, but still kill anywhere from 2% to 15%. That's actually the perfectly engineered ratio for a biological weapon system. If the death rate were 80% instead of mild symptoms for 80%, then it would just kill all the carriers and it wouldn't spread. So when when people say, oh, it's just like the flu, 80% of the people have mild symptoms. Yeah, that's by design, folks. That's so that it spreads. And now you've got scientists talking about uh, this is going to infect 40 to 70% of the entire global population. So that's up to what, 4 billion people, maybe, that could get infected by this? So, I mean, I mean do, do the math on this, right? If the death rate is 2% out of uh, 4 billion people, then that's 80 million deaths, isn't it? Did I do that right? 80 million deaths? Yeah. That's a lot of deaths, folks. That dwarfs the Spanish flu of 1918, and it certainly dwarfs the number of people killed each year by the regular common cold or the regular flu, even in America. Let's do the math in America, okay? Let's just say there's only 300 million people in America. Let's say 50% of those get infected. That's 150 million people infected. 150 million people times a a 2% death rate, that's 3 million deaths in America versus, what, 35,000 deaths from the common cold. So people who say this is common cold, they're not doing the math on this. Not even close. If 3 million people drop dead in America from this, I mean, think about it, we only have about a quarter of a million hospital beds that are free in this country. So how are you even going to treat 3 million people? That seems impossible. You don't even have that many beds. And those beds aren't even containment beds. They're not biohazard isolation beds. Just regular hospital beds. And regular hospital rooms are not you know, biosafety level four, biocontainment, bubble boy rooms. No, they're, they're just regular rooms where doctors spread MRSA superbugs from room to room, by the way, which is why superbugs are one of the primary causes of death in hospitals in America today, because the germs are all distributed all over the place. So how are you going to treat? I mean, if you've got 3 million deaths, again, that's a, that's a, that's a 2% death rate. So you got 150 million people infected. Where do the 150 million people get health care? They don't, is the answer. So then the death rate goes way above 2%. Because 150 million people showing up even even in just a one-year period, show up at a local hospital, hospitals are going to very quickly say, we're out of space. In fact, we ran out of antibiotics six months ago because they're all made in China. We ran out of masks and gloves. We basically ran out of everything. In fact, we're lucky to have electricity today in the hospital. So, so go home and pray for God to save you. Actually, what you should do is go home and start taking you know, Chinese herbs and 
eating dandelion root and taking elderberry and eating exotic spices. You know, you want to you want to get cured? Turn to natural medicine because the Western medicine is going to be out of supplies. Their supply lines have collapsed. But if you use herbs, your supply line is your backyard or your little home container gardening of herbs and spices and everything you can grow. I hope you're buying seeds for that. I hope you're ready for some container gardening. You can grow medicine in a bucket, literally just just five gallon buckets, put soil in them. You can grow all kinds of medicine, like actual antiviral, powerful, potent medicine for free. But you got to have the seeds and it helps to have some experience doing that too. So I, I don't see a scenario where if 150 million people are infected in America, I don't see a scenario where only 2 million people die or 3 million people die. I, I, I don't see that happening. That's kind of a best case scenario if, if this spreads the way that these scientists are, are describing. So no, it's not the flu. It's a biological weapon. And frankly, anybody saying this is the flu I believe is is feeding you a lot of disinformation. Whether they're doing it intentionally or otherwise or innocently, I think it's disinformation. And besides, if you prepare for a pandemic and then there isn't one, you haven't lost anything. You're prepared now for all kinds of things. But if you didn't prepare for a pandemic and there is one, you're screwed. So on that matrix alone, it it works to prepare. Get prepared and hope it's not nearly as bad as we think it might be. That's the right answer. Stay informed. Read my website, pandemic.news. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. I want you to stay safe. I want you to survive this. I hope it's not as bad as we fear, but if it is, you can survive it, but you have to be ready in advance. Thanks for listening. When it comes to prepping, you not only need good products that can help keep you alive, awake, aware, and nourished during difficult times, you also need products you can trust. At the Health Ranger store, we do extensive laboratory testing using an in-house lab that's ISO accredited. It's inspected, it's audited. It's a two-year process to even get that accreditation. We use multiple mass spec instruments, state-of-the-art science. I'm a published science author as well and a patent holder on several technologies, some of which we use variations of in our lab. The purpose of this lab is to help you make sure you get clean, foods, superfoods, storable foods for emergency preparedness and survival use. We have a certified organic lab tested, what's called Ranger Bucket collection of storable foods with some survival gear in the buckets to help you even boil water and cook those foods and so on. It's a, a fantastic product. We can barely keep it in stock even during normal times. In a crisis, we'll be wiped out of this product because it actually takes us a lot of time to make those products. But if they're in stock, you can get them now at healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike. In fact, go to that URL, healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike, and you'll see some of our survival and preparedness supplies, including iodine, colloidal silver products, and gel first aid products, storable foods, superfoods, medicinal herbs for first aid, and much more. We have a lot of products for you to help you be self-reliant, to be safe, to survive difficult circumstances, natural disasters, and all kinds of things. If you want to get prepared, do it with us at the Health Ranger store so that you know you're getting safe, clean, laboratory-verified preparedness foods, supplements, and other related products. Again, the URL is healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. All one word, no spaces. Prep with Mike. I'm Mike Adams. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com. <laughs>